Miss Roseanne here. Thank you for tuning in to Ascension Kids Sunday School Online. Now, I know you have all been praying at home because I think pretty soon we will start having Kids Sunday School back at the church. Wouldn't that be great? Anyway, we will be reaching out to all the families about this exciting news and the details. In the meantime, here we all are on YouTube to learn about our great God. Now, every Sunday, I say a special hello or happy birthday to one or two of you. Today, we have one very special birthday. We have a birthday girl whose birthday date disappeared this year. What? A birthday date disappeared? Where did it go? Have you found a missing birthday lying around your house? Well, it's not that kind of disappearing. Have you ever heard of leap year? Leap year is very funny. You see, February has 28 days. However, every four years, a February 29th appears on the calendar. And then after that one, it disappears again for another four years. So if your birthday is on leap year, February 29th, some years it's not there. So do you celebrate your birthday then if it disappears? Of course you do. You just have to decide whether to celebrate it the day before February 28th or the day after, which is March 1st. So Vivian was born on leap year, February 29th of last year. But this year there's no February 29th. Let's give Vivian a very special Ascension first birthday leap year shout out. Are you ready? One, two, three. Happy first birthday, Vivian! Today, I have two super duper important questions for you to think about while I tell the story. Listen carefully. Question one. What special promise did God remind Moses about that would be for Joshua and Caleb and the children of the Israelites? Question two, who did God promise he would send later on to rescue the people from their sins? Wow, you have been with me each Sunday while we listened and learned about the entire story of Moses. From Moses when he was a newborn baby and put in the Nile River. Do you remember? Now we're going to learn about him as he continues to be an old man. Over all those years of his life, we saw that God made promises to the people of Israel. And he was always sure to keep those promises. And he continues to make promises to you and to me. Now, do you remember all the promises we studied? Let's see if you can remember. Now, after each promise, I will put my hand on my ear and I want you, when you see me put my hand on my ear, I want you to say at home out loud, Promises, promises, God keeps promises. 
Can you do that with me? Here's my hand. Promises, promises. God keeps his promises. Good. Let's go. In our first story, God told Moses to lead his people out of Egypt. What did he promise to Moses? Hmm. Did you remember Moses while well, he was speaking to Moses in the burning bush? Reminded him that he, God would be with him every step of the way as he led the people out of Egypt. That God would always be with them. Promises, promises. God keeps promises. What is Moses praying here for? Do you remember? He was praying that the Pharaoh would let the people go. Promises, promises. God keeps promises. What promise was this? Do you remember? There's a door and there's blood on the door. Remember the plagues God allowed so that Pharaoh would let the people go? God promised that when he saw the blood on the doorposts that those homes with the lamb's blood would be passed over and no one inside would need to die. Promises, promises. God keeps promises. What did God promise the people here? Do you remember? Yes, that he would give his people food even though he was in, they were in the desert with no food around them. God sent this manna from heaven. Promises, promises. God keeps promises. And what did God promise here? Do you remember? Yes, that they would have water to drink. Moses was told by God to strike the rock and water would gush out for them. Promises, promises. God keeps promises. What did Moses tell the people that God was promising them now in this picture? Do you remember? Maybe you remember that he brought down the stone tablets and said he would be their God and they would be his people and that was their covenant. Promises, promises. God keeps promises. Whom did God promise to finally send into Canaan the promised land? Hmm. Do you remember they were on the border of Canaan, but they weren't able to go in with Moses? This was promised to Joshua and Caleb and the children of all the grown-ups who were with them. God would also promise to forgive them for their disobedience. Promises, promises. God keeps promises. Okay. And who, and who did God promise he would send one day. If you said Jesus, you are right. 
He sent Jesus, a Savior, to die for our sins. Promises, promises. God keeps promises. Wow, so many promises. God deserves our praises. Today, with the help of our friends who live in London, England, across the Atlantic Ocean, we will learn a very famous song of praise. Could you sing this song along with the girls? This hymn is called the doxology. Could you say doxology? Excellent. Such a fancy word. We sing the doxology when we are overjoyed to see how wonderful God is. And we are so happy about Him and His promises. And we just want to praise Him from deep within our hearts, just like those first Christians did back over 2,000 years. Here are the girls with the doxology. Thanks, Miss Roseanne, and welcome to London. Here I'm we are. I'm afraid our background's not very London looking. It's just a bedroom. <laughs> we're, just, we're just at home. But I'm Alexandra. And I'm Katie. And today, as Miss Roseanne said, we are going to be singing the doxology. Now, what's so cool about the doxology is that people from all around the world and all around America, no matter what kind of church they go to, often know the words to this song because it's really, really short. So, if you gather in groups of other Christians and meet people and all sing it together, you'll often have them all singing it in different harmony lines and with different voices so that it sounds like a choir of angels and it's all very fun. So, first we're going to just, I'm, we're just going to tell you the lyrics of the song. So, it goes, Praise God from whom all blessings flow, which basically just means thanks be to God, uh, Everything that is good, every blessing comes from him. Praise him, all creatures here below. So that is everyone, all creatures, every creature he has made, including us, should praise him. Praise him above, ye heavenly hosts. What does that one mean? Um, it means all the angels and the, the hosts above should also be praising God. It's not just yeah. the creatures here on earth, but it's the creatures up in heaven too, because there are also other creatures like angels up in heaven. Praise Father, Praise Son, Father, and, Holy Son Ghost. and Holy Ghost, which is the three, that's called the Trinity. That is the three parts of God. Father, Son, which is Jesus, and the Holy Ghost, or sometimes you might hear Holy Spirit. So now we're going to sing. And then it finishes with Amen. <laughs> and then Amen, which means, yes, I believe prayer. this. Yeah. Great job. Um, so now we're going to just sing the song normally for you. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Good job! Now, do you remember when I said that when you get a whole bunch of Christians together, they sing this in a lot of different beautiful voices? And hey, we're a bunch of Christians together, aren't we? Well, we're two. Well, we're two, but a bunch. <laughs> so now we're going to sing it again, uh, but I'm going to be singing slightly different notes than Katie is. So you can follow Katie, which is what we have just sang, or you can follow me if your voice is a little higher and you'd like to. All right, great. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. You did it! You sang the doxology. Um, and we'll come back at the end of today's episode and sing it for you once more. Because often in churches, the doxology is sang at the end. See you then? Thank you, girls. Today's story 
is found in the book of Deuteronomy, chapters 31 through 34. It was time for God to keep another promise. It was time for the children of Israel to enter the land God said he would give them, the land of milk and honey. Now Moses became an old man. God had made him able to do the jobs he was supposed to do. Moses had led the people out of Egypt. He had taught them God's law. But now God said it would soon be time for Moses to leave the Israelites as they got ready to go into Canaan, the promised land. Moses spoke to all the people. I am no longer able to lead you, he said. Joshua will go with you into the new land. The Lord your God will be with you. He will lead you there. Moses wrote down the law, God's word, and gave it to the priests. Read it to the people, he told the priests, so they can listen to God's word every day, learn what God wants them to do, and obey what he says. Then Moses gathered the people around him. They listened quietly as he spoke to them. Moses reminded them that God has taken care of them all along and loves them. Moses told the people to love God with all their hearts. God had taken them out of Egypt so they could obey him and serve him in this land of promise. God said he would give you this beautiful land and now he is about to keep that promise, Moses said. Moses was saying goodbye to the Israelites. Moses climbed Mount Nebo. All the people watched him go. They knew he would not come back down. It would be time for Moses to die. When Moses reached the top of the mountain, God showed him all the land of Canaan. Remember, they were near the border. Moses could see the rich land, the valleys, the hills, the sea. Even though those things were far away in the distance, he could see them all from Mount Nebo where he was standing. It was a wonderful sight for him to see, the place of promise. Moses looked at the land he had been waiting so long to go to. His heart was filled with praise to the Lord. Then Moses died and God took him to live with him in heaven. Joshua, the new leader of the Israelites, prepared to lead God's people into the land of promise and soon they would march into Canaan. Many, many years later, God kept another promise he made to his people, the promise to send a savior. God would send his son, Jesus, to that very sa same land to rescue the people from their sins. That same land was called Canaan, where Jesus would be born as a little baby. Later, Jesus died on the cross for all the sins of the people, the sins of Moses, the sins of Joshua, the, your sins, and my sins. Jesus then rose from the dead to live forever. He is our living Savior. If you or anyone trusts 
and loves in the Lord Jesus, then they can be sure that God will forgive the wrong things they do. If you trust and love God, the Holy Spirit lives in your heart and helps you to trust and love and obey and praise God. Isn't it wonderful how God loves us and helps us? It makes us glad that God keeps his promises. Now it's time for me to ask you the two questions that I asked you at the beginning of this story. Question one, what special promise did God remind Moses about that would be for Joshua and Caleb and the children of the Israelites? You guessed it. God promised that Joshua and Caleb would be the ones to lead them into the promised land. Question two, who did God promise he would send later on to rescue the people from their sins? That's right. God promised he would send a savior. He did send this savior when he sent Jesus. Today's lesson was called God keeps his word. And we saw that throughout Moses' life, God did keep his word to Moses and the Israelites, just as he keeps his word to you and to me. If you would like to have a worksheet, just like this one that has the story and the, the activities to do for your kids, please reach out to me at Roseanne at ascensionforesthills.org and I will be glad to get you a digital or hard copy of this lesson's worksheets. Let's do our memory verse. Our memory verse goes along with singing the doxology. Worship the Lord with gladness. Psalm 100 verse 2. Can you read that again with me? Worship the Lord with gladness. Psalm 100 verse 2. It was so good to have you with us today. I'll see you next time. Have a good week. Bye.